Good morning, everybody. This is Brian Caprice, and welcome to our very first Tuesday morning trade talk. So many of you uh, know me from the Monday morning sessions, and uh, I'm gonna, now that it's September, I'm going to be doing Monday and Tuesday mornings to get you guys set up for the day and the rest of the week. So I hope everybody had a great, um, great weekend. Uh, again, holiday weekend. I hope everybody was safe, uh, enjoyable way to cap off the summer. Um, I think, you know, today for me is a big day. It's uh, the kids' first day back at school, so I'm very, very excited about that one. So I don't know if anybody else, their kids go back late, but for me, it's a big day. It's, bam, summer's over, send those kids back, you know, toast the other parents at the bus stop, and we are off to, off to the, you know, the fall here. So uh, it's also very exciting, too, because now that we've entered September and the kids are back, it's, it's typically back to business time as well. So uh, August got a little bit funky. I'm not going to, you know, not going to candy coat this one any different way. There was weeks where really nothing moved. You know, it, it was very stagnant, very, very difficult time period to trade through. Um, you know, Nadex kind of had a bit of an advantage on that one, uh, being options, but you know, definitely you guys know that I specialize in currency for the most part, and definitely a few weeks where just things weren't moving at all. So very, very excited that, uh, we're here now in September. Um, very happy that you're with us. And, uh, again, make sure you guys get signed up for these on Mondays and Tuesday mornings. So before I dive in anything for, for those of you that are new, that maybe don't know who I am, um, I've actually been doing things for Nadex for a little while now, but uh, let me give you kind of a background so you understand where my analysis come from and kind of how I'm looking at charts because it may be differently than some what some people are used to. So um, I'm the, the CEO and, and president of Keep Trading Simple, and what our job is as a, as a company, our mission is, is to really help remove the distractions that a lot of the professionals tell you that you have to have. Uh, you won't see indicators on my charts. I'm purely a price action trader. Um, I'm not a candlestick reader person, for, for lack of a better word. Uh, but I read price action. Um, I've created different programs that traders can use, the 30-minute trader program as well, five-minute binary courses. And those are all meant for people that have full-time jobs. Uh, one of the reasons I like doing these so early in the morning before the market's open and before work time is because um, I'm a big believer in not sitting in front of a computer for 16, 18 hours a day. Use technology. Have it alert you when you come back. So you know, I, I'm a very firm believer that you don't need to do that to be a full-time trader. Um, I always say that, you know, Having a job because you want it is much better than having a job because you need it, okay? And that's the mantra that I try to, you know, portray to all my students as well. Now, I did work in, in the advisor division of one of the big three banks. Um, so I've kind of gotten, I've, I've looked at this from both sides. I've looked at it from the external, trying to become a trader, having a full-time job, no time, no money, all those things, to, be, you know, going on the inside, seeing how things operate on the kind of professional level. And then seeing that side, I came back out again, and now I spend my time, you know, focusing on teaching people how to trade the markets. Um, I am a, I'm very busy. I, I coach my two sons. You can see them. They're actually twins there. Um, again, they're like, oh, I don't want to go to school. I can hear them already in the other room. And then the little one is off. Uh, she's now 15 months old. So she's walking. She's into everything, not speaking yet, but it keeps me pretty busy at home. So that's what I do for most of my day. Um, but again, I focus on setting alerts, coming back, setting my positions, and uh, again, finding the best opportunities out there every day. I'm not one of those people that just sits there and stares at a monitor. It just, to me, that's not what I'm about. All right. So with that being said, um, let me cover whoops, the Nadex risk disclaimer. All right, so trading on Nadex involves financial risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. The information presented here today is for information and education purposes only and should not be considered an offer or solicitation to buy or sell any financial instrument on Nadex or elsewhere. Any trading decisions that you make are solely your responsibility. Now, past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Nadex contracts are based on underlining asset classes, including Forex, stock index futures, and commodity futures. Now, trading can be volatile, and investors risk losing their investment on any given transaction. However, the design of Nadex contracts ensures that investors cannot lose more than the cost to enter the transaction. Nadex is subject to U.S. regulatory oversight by the CFTC. And as I mentioned every single week, one of the things I love the most is that last paragraph. The fact that, you know, Nadex, uh, the way that they are designed, you can't lose any more than the cost to end of the transaction. Very important, especially for people that are coming across and finding Nadex for the first time, coming from things like the stock market or the futures market, where a margin call is a real thing. Um, in Nadex, you don't have that, and it's one of the things that I love most about it. It's one of the biggest perks for me, okay? Now, every week what I do is I'll do a, and again, I'll do this on Mondays and Tuesdays um, as we progress through. Um, I give you my top three news releases of the week. And what I'm doing is, when I, what I mean by the top three news releases is, these are the top three that I think have the biggest potential to not only be a miss, but also give us the most amount of movement, okay? I love news trading. It's probably my favorite aspect of trading the markets. 
And again, I will look every single week, every single day um, that I'm looking at this, I will go on and kind of see where we are currently with news releases. These are my top three. It doesn't mean that they're going to absolutely move. I'm not telling you there's no trade set up right now, um, but these are the top three. First one, obviously, being non-farm payroll and the unemployment rate. Uh, very big thing. This is considered one of the, this is kind of considered the, the Mac Daddy, the granddaddy of all news releases. Okay, It's one of the biggest movers in not only the stock indices, but also in the currency markets. Um, and again, this presidency is very focused on the economy. Okay, Non-farm payroll numbers and the unemployment rate are a big driver of that. Um, you can already you know, kind of see some things last week about you know, markets starting to go into a recession, which it was supposed to do you know, three years ago. And, and again, we're in a different place now. This is a big number to watch this week. Okay, Number two, and this is for those nighttime people, the Australian GDP. Uh, <laughs> I did it again. It's supposed to be GDP. Uh, let me change this real quick. There you go, GDP. Okay. Uh, one of the nice things about trading Australian news, and if you've never done it before, definitely absolutely check it out. Because there's no other big markets open at that point, it's just the Asian session. You don't have the US dollar politics, you don't have the European politics, uh, you just have Aussie. It's a pure trade. You can trade it with the Aussie dollar currency pair, um, you know, for Nadex. 930 at night, this thing can be a mover. It can move two, three, you know, different strike prices. Um, you can trade it with the Aussie yen as well. One of my favorite things to be able to trade at night. Okay, so if you're getting, if you're new to this and you haven't traded currencies, check this one out and you have the ability to trade this one at night before bed, right? Number three, okay, on Wednesday, September 4th, I can't believe I'm saying September, is the CAD um, over, overnight rate and BOC. Now, we're not expecting that there's going to be any type of a rate cut. But any type of language, again, the United States, we're talking about rate cuts and getting a further rate cut, and other nations are cutting. Uh, there was a surprise cut, um, I guess, last month with New Zealand. CAD isn't in a great place, but we'll see if they start mentioning rate cuts because that's a huge driver in foreign currencies, okay? Um, so that has the potential to have some fireworks set behind there. And at the same time, just in all fair balance, if it comes in and there's absolutely no language, it's not going to be a mover. There's no news there, right? It's only in case there's a miss, which, again, the misses do happen more often than not. Um, so just in fair disclosure, these things may come exactly as forecast. And again, don't come back, you know, next week be like, Brian, you said this was going to be huge. Well, it's huge and, and things move when obviously the forecast is different than the actual. Okay. Um, that kind of helps. All right. So with that being said, um, let's kind of do a week kind of look here. Now, again, this is Forex Factor. It's a site that I use for news and a couple other different scanners at the top. Um, what I've done now is I've actually taken not only the high, which is the red, I've also used in the orange, right? So you can see, obviously, nothing yesterday. Tuesday, um, we had some Australian data early on, very, very early, which was actually considered more last night. Um, and again, this is where we have the Australian news coming in at 9.30 p.m. tonight, Eastern time, okay? Now, it is expected to be slightly higher than it was before, which, again, that is good. But again, people in that region have had bad news, right? Uh, we just had the rate. It did not change, but... Again, this is a big thing to look for. If all of a sudden this starts dropping and the GDP is going even slower, they may start talking about lowering this one. Okay, again, this could be a big mover for the Aussie. Going into tomorrow, we see a little bit of data for the pound, which is important, right? Then we start jumping in the trade balances. And trade balance is important for the CAD, and here's why. It is a nation that is based more or less on exports, particularly for oil, okay? So if this number starts getting a little bit funky, the CAD has the ability to start jumping all over the place, okay? Now, Right after that, and again, tomorrow morning, it's kind of bam, 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 bam. We have 8.30, but then we have 9.15, we have pound news. Now, the pound is just being, it's just getting beaten up with this whole Brexit thing. For those of you that don't know, Brexit is, the exit is happening in October. And we've been told it's happening one way or the other. May got kicked out. Johnson is in there now. He's starting to tweet, we're leaving one way or the other. Let's just do it. The Queen's, you know, suspending Parliament. The CAD news, all these things like this, um, you know, these high, uh, high kind of influence releases are going to start getting more and more unpopular, more popular with the pound. Um, the closer we get to Brexit, the more kind of bouncing back and forth we're going to see. Very, very important. So again, that's 915. The 925, you know, Williams is speaking again. I don't see that being too big, but then we jump right into the CAD statement right after that. Okay. And again, not expected to be a, a change, but any language that we get from, you know, over here, it's, it could be coming in very, very quick, especially, excuse me, especially if this, um, uh, you know, if the early news for the, the trade balance is not good, right? Going into Thursday, you can see that's where we starting to have our um, ADP uh, employment change. Um, ISM manufacturing rate behind it again, 815, 10, 1030, and then bam. This week, remember, crude oil is on Thursday because Monday the markets were closed. So it's pushed back one day. 
for those of you who don't know or have not traded it, if you're trading oil, oil is a great, um, really a great asset to trade. I, but I, me personally, my opinion is it's very dangerous to trade in the futures market because it can move. It's the Wild West. It gets nuts. I do like to trade it, though, over here on the Nadex side of things. And again, it's now considered a high impact release again on Forex Factory. For a while, it had dropped. But now that we're back in September, you know, it's a big one. Also, you guys look at this last time. Look at the forecasts. They never seem to be right on crude oil, right? Last time, the forecast was supposed to be minus 2.8 inventory. We are minus 10. It was a huge big, you know, huge difference, right? So, again, there's definitely some trade opportunities in oil. Going into Friday, and you can see 8.30 is a magical time. That's where all the non-farm data is. You'll actually see some employment change data on unemployment rate data for the CAD as well. Um, again, if you want to trade the CAD by itself, it may or may not be the best place to do it at Nadex um, because everything will be focused on the U.S. dollar. But again, there is the possibility that you can trade CAD dollar or some type of a retrace off of this kind of news if they counterbalance each other. Okay, If they're both bad or both good, doesn't do a lot, but if one is good and one is you know, lopsided for bad, you can definitely get some big movement, okay? And then, closing it all off at 12.30 p.m. on Friday, Powell speaking. Now, Powell does have the power to move it, unlike Williams and a lot of the other guys. Powell, when he talks, absolutely, without a doubt, can move the market. So just be cautious of that as well if you have any positions on And After about 12.30, the market just kind of go womp, 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 and all the volatility is gone. Typically leaves as the European traders go offline for the weekend, okay? So, that is our kind of um, week at a glance here. So with that being said, uh, let's pop this one out. Let's look into a couple charts here. So one of the things that I do um, in particular is I focus a lot on kind of four hour time frames. Now, the way this is set up right now, for those of you that are new to these broadcasts for me, with me, the upper left hand corner up here, this is my daily chart. So I'm using my daily chart to look for overall trends in the market. And you can see the trend has kind of more or less been sideways, which makes things a little bit more difficult. Looking down into this bottom left-hand corner, this is the four-hour, and this is where me personally, I spend the most of my time when I'm looking at currency charts. And then what I do is, uh, once I determine trend, I look for my actual setups on the four-hour, and then I refine them and make them smaller over on the 30-minute. Now, obviously, with a holiday weekend this week, um, things are going to be a little bit more skewed. As you can see, when I'm looking for overall trend, we've had a bit of a gap. You know, Again, we had the gap. Um, price did come up, touch the gap, and kind of retrace back down again. Again, typically what we would more or less expect um but as far as overall trend on the daily really not seeing a lot of movement even on the four hour obviously holiday but even when looking into last week um you guys can see it's it's more or less it's basically flatline right we had this little pop down a bit of a retrace and then sideways so for me there's really not a whole lot i'm looking at uh this area up at 7170 to 71 say 95 ish is still an area where i'm going to start looking a little bit more bearish um, to kind of, you know, have this thing turn and flip. But right now, obviously no trade setup. It, it's not there yet. Um, it's more or less sideways. When the U.S. market comes online, we will start to see some movement with the yen. And that may actually, you know, give us a, the ability to kind of propel this a little bit. Now, this is one of the pairs that you can trade for the Aussie News this evening at 930. This will, this will react and move from that. The other pair would be the Aussie dollar as well. And you can see the Aussie dollar has been a little bit more of in a grindy kind of phase, um, kind of down and retracing. Like, if you look over here on the 30 minute, you can see a lot of down, a lot of back and forth, a lot of kind of like almost like sawtooth like, right? And you can see price went all the way down, went right below this four hour zone and then immediately popped back up again. That happened early this morning. Um, and not surprising, okay? Uh, one of the things, and again, this is a little bit of a teaching lesson uh, for me. Um, I will not go too much into this, but if you guys look right here, okay? Uh, I'm not a believer, I'm a believer in price action, but I'm not a support and resistance trader. I do use supply and demand, but they are different. This is a, a very easy bear trap. Um, people see this and automatically are looking at this saying, hey, look, I'm a support and resistance trade. There's resistance. As soon as it goes lower than that, I'm I'm selling it, man. The, the, the support is broken. Let's go. And you guys can see exactly what happened. The, the moment that it broke through, just in time for you guys to get in your trades, it immediately went against you and then rallied higher, shot right up in the air. And again, very easy type of a bear trap. Um, where we are now, price is obviously rallying back up again. Um, it's coming back to kind of where it was on Friday. Um, you guys can see this would be the, the Sunday, Monday candle. This is the Friday candle right here. So we are rallying back up to kind of where the end of business was last week. Again, I'm okay with that. Um, I would like to see it kind of rally a bit higher, go into this area before we got news tonight, uh, in which case then I would have a little bit more of a bearish sentiment with it. Um, but right now, again, we're waiting for the U.S. to come online. It's a bit early. U.S. traders and U.S. money is not there yet. You know, gold's not really doing much yet. Um, we'll see kind of where this is going once the market comes online today. 
Okay. Um, again, this is a, the second pair that I would be looking at this evening at 9:30 for the Australian, you know, rate release. Okay. Now jumping down, uh, Euro pound is a big one. Okay. Now we, you can see here on the daily, Euro pound was really, really driving back down again, and it was coming back down to a zone that we were watching, and it's something that I've mentioned in the Mondays. Back down here to 89.50. Okay. Anytime you have 50 or 00, 00 at the end of a number in currencies, it's a big deal. Okay. Now, what this pair did is it actually came back. This was a channel that I had drawn for something else. Let me remove those now just to get them out of the way. Now, what you guys can see though is it did come back. And again, uh, this was in the middle of the night, so I was unable to catch this one. Okay. But here was an area where price had previously shown us that we had great momentum, right? Really, really pushed hard off of there. This is what we would call an extended range candle or a parabolic candle. What did price do? It came up, hit, and immediately dropped back down again. Um, not a trade that I took, but this would have been a great little setup. Small risk, um, nice profit target. It actually went almost all the way to where it was going to go, or you know, technically should have went, um, or that I would have been forecasting for it to go. Uh, you guys can see that this one actually already had about 87 pips, okay? That is over four strike prices at Nadex bounce off that pop. This is a lot of movement for this pair, okay? So uh, at this point, I'd say that the trade is probably expired already. We've missed it at this point. It would have triggered, oof, what, about 3.30 this morning uh, with the London Open. Uh, not only a rally up fast, but that was our trigger to get short. Um, again, on the daily, you can see we're, we're really kind of just grinding back again and again we hit this level the sawtooth on the daily and again th this is why i use my daily four hour and 30 minute as far as my entries and again missed opportunity but there are numerous opportunities that exist out there okay um looking for this one later in the week again i think the pound news uh that we do have later uh will give us some more movement in this pair but any news out of the european union or any mention of brexit this is the first pair that you want to look at and uh in my opinion even if you're not going to trade this one because you're not familiar with the euro pound, understanding what is happening on this one will help you trade the euro dollar and the pound dollar better. Okay, because you'll have more of an idea of which one is strong, which one is weak. Then you can play it against the dollar, right? Um, speaking of that, let's go over and look at your yen. So your yen, it's been just slow, slow, slow grinding. You can see this, right? Last week was here, we ended it, and now we continued. Now, this one had a very interesting setup. Um, one of their, there's different strategies that people trade, obviously. One of them that I have is a weekend gap strategy. And again, didn't play it this week because of the holiday, but it worked out perfectly, right? So whenever you have any type of a gap and you have a gap in the direction of trend, you can use any type of a pullback as a launching point. It's one of the things that I believe in. This actually would have given you that entry. You guys can see you had two possible entries right now. What I'm looking for on this one is I'm looking for some type of a pullback or some type of a signal that we've hit a bottom. Now, looking back, you guys can see, I mean, I can go all the way back to, you know, last year and price still hasn't been this low on this pair, right? We're normally up in this, you know, if I bring this back, um, instead of a daily, let's go to a, uh, a weekly. You guys can see the last time the price was back here was all the way over here, right? Back in April. That's weekly, so actually that's 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 two years ago, okay? Um, and again, we're getting into this gap here. So, I mean, it's just been on this down tear, right? Um, and again, a lot more a lot more recently. So what I'm looking for is eventually it's going to run into a section of buyers, okay? Um, I'm looking for some type of confirmation of this halt. Typically, I'm not gonna get short something, at least on a kind of a, a macro scale, after a long movement in price to the downside. So a pullback like this, Right, I'm all over that. I love the pullback to continue in, but until we get some type of a pullback, that's really nice. And again, this was a really, really gorgeous one. Um, again, for me, I'm on the sidelines. You know, I'm going to jump into a trend, but I'm not going to try to grab it until I have some type of a confirmation. Looking for any anything long in this? Again, I need a confirmation that the trend has stopped and the trend has changed, and it's going to take a couple of days to be able to get that. And nothing in here signifies that this has stopped to going to the downside. Okay. Um, and again, always have a plan, whether it be on a retracement, again, like this, perfect, perfect entry to be able to, to step in, okay? Um, Euro dollar, again, I mentioned that before. So Euro dollar has kind of done the same thing. It has just gone straight down, okay? This has been Euro weakness, obviously, whenever the pair goes down. Uh, you guys can see we had entry up here as far as the red line goes. It just dropped, 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 dropped. I mean, from August 25th, when we had this nice little pop-up, it has done nothing but go straight down. Now, one thing that I will mention about this is you guys see the angle, right? You guys see the angle. It's not a single pop like this, but the angle is very, very sharp in this one. 
typically when you have a very, very sharp drop like that, you're looking for it to run into something. And that, that actually becomes a great area to kind of launch off of. But with this coming back down, we're at 109.33. As soon as you break 110, there are huge, huge, huge psychological factors that get involved in this pair. And then all of a sudden people start talking about, well, will this get to parity? Well, it could get to parity, right? Parity being 1.00. And that gets real interesting because again, if the euro gets to parity, why can't the pound? Okay, this, this changes a lot of things fundamentally in the world. Yeah, and this is the lowest the euro, I mean, the lowest I've ever seen the euro is uh, just slightly below this, but this is pretty crazy, okay? And again, there's a lot that could happen to make the dollar a little bit stronger, which would continue to push this pair down. And there's also a lot that could help, you know, that could make the European Union even weaker. And again, that will also shoot this pair straight to the downside. So again, I'm looking for the same thing. I'm looking for some type of a pullback in this one. Um, again, there's a little bit of a pullback right here. Looking for any type of pullback to the downside, but I'm also going to be cautious that, again, you guys all know this the statement. The trend is your friend until what? The bend at the end, right? So that's what we're being a little bit cautious of, waiting for this. Because, again, this is a lot of movement to the downside. Not that it can't go farther, but, again, that's what happens whenever you see these really sharp angles is where you get the pullbacks, okay? So just be a little bit cautious here. Um, going across, looking at the pound yen. The pound yen, for those of you that know me, I have a love-hate relationship with the pound yen. Um, this one has literally been bouncing back and forth between these two areas. And it looks like we're finally trying to break through the bottom side of it, but I haven't been in love with this pair lately. It's been very, very flat. Again, we had nice movement, and then it just kind of just, you guys can see it. A lot of wick, right? A lot of wick. You guys see this? Look at this. Bodies are small. Wicks are big. Not my favorite kind of area to trade in, right? I, I prefer when we have, you know, a little bit more of bo more body, less wick you know shows a lot more conviction to go in a you know a specific direction this not really it hasn't really been that great it's been bouncing again up down up down up sideways back down again back over again pop and back down again you guys can see up retrace okay this this one down retraced up this one went down pop came back went right back down to the same area popped over again popped up and then popped right back down again popped up down popped up down popped up went down right back to the same move so it's literally just bouncing level across to another level, back to another level, back and forth again. And it's gotten very, very kind of small, right? Um, this pair used to be known for having huge, I mean, you guys can see, look back in here. I mean, this just goes, right, from 142, and now we're kind of just stuck within this 129 to 127. So, I mean, even on a daily, you guys can see, this was the last time that we had Brexit. It was jumping 250 pips every single day or every two days we were, we were transversing back and forth again. Now it's down in the 50s and 60s. Okay, so big difference. But this is why this is exciting that we're in September. As the word Brexit is in the news more, most likely the market will return back to this. So we need to find the top and bottom side channels, and that's what I've been kind of focusing on. I wanted to blow through this bottom self buying area. I like this as a top channel to kind of create a kind of 200 pip channel back and forth is what I'm looking for. So not quite there yet, but I'm looking forward. It's close. The closer we get to that October deadline, the more powerful that will become. Okay. Now looking across to pound dollar okay pound dollar again we've seen dollar strength we see pound weakness it's continuing to push down but we do have some spikes coming back up again now very interesting spike you guys see this green came up again parabolic retracement came up grabbed these orders up top and is starting to push back down again very fast spike up and down um and that was off of this level right here okay you guys can see that why did it shoot all the way up and stop uh, what we would call a wick over wick, okay? It's a hidden area of buyers and seller indifferences. And, and again, nice little kind of bounce off of that area to, you know, to come back to the downside. And it's, you know, it's forming its retrace, even though it's already moved quite a bit, okay? Um, similar situation. Uh, I think this one is driving further. I'm looking to get into this one short on any type of retracements back. They have to be good quality levels. This just happened to be a good quality level here. If price does go back into that 10, uh, 127, 76 area, I will probably be looking to get short this one again. Um, again, it will depend how it enters that zone, but it's shown me right now that there are definitely sellers sitting in this area because this thing had so much power. Look at this huge news related candle straight up and it what was it? It was like a tennis match, the US Open. It got knocked and pushed right back down again. Okay, kind of the, that ping pong effect. All right. Um, so definitely keep an eye out for that one with news. Um, dropping down, let's go over and look at uh, dollar CAD. As I mentioned, the CAD has definitely got some, um, you know, trade balance is going to be important. Uh, the 
oil numbers are going to be important and then we get later in the week we're going to have those uh unemployment data which is going to be big too so on the daily the one thing i'm looking for is this zone right here um if i put a line straight across you guys will see we're starting to get a little bit close to it uh, we need about 40 more pips before we get into that area we were in a small area right here you guys can see this area that's marked off in yellow this was a small selling zone that we had set up but it was one of those things that after the price again right here at 9 a.m um, yesterday drove this far this deep into it the zone basically became invalidated when the price shot back down again and it did what it was supposed to do it was it was trending up it pulled back it grabbed the zone on the four hour and then pushed through and again once it went to here it only needed a little bit more to drive through and that's what we've seen now so it's done it's a it's a it's a nice healthy kind of push right your impulse correction impulse correction impulse correction impulse and there's a little deeper correction impulse correction impulse correction and you know correction back again so not a bad little kind of push through i'm waiting for it to get a little bit higher before i'm looking to get short um it needs a, it's only got 40 more pips to do its atr is about 65 so it's absolutely something that can be handled and pushed through in one day okay uh, for those of you who are not using atr atr is a very handy kind of tool in my eyes because it tells you what's what's possible what the potential is for you know the movement in a day okay um dropping down to dollar swiss okay dollar swiss had some big movement now Dollar Smith Swiss is one of those things that we're waiting for it to get just a bit higher. I actually had an alert, this blue line right here is my alert to trigger me to come back and see if we're going to hit this gap area here. You can see over here, again, nice gap, huge drop down again, and it spent time going sideways. Again, drop down again, looking for a retrace, and now we're high. So waiting, waiting to get short for me up here in the 99, kind of 45 to 99.50 area. Um, it's one of those things I'm waiting. My alert is right here. Uh, for those of you who don't know how to use alerts, alerts are great. You set them, you get an email or an alert on your phone that says, hey, come back. Price is where you wanted it to be when you wanted to look at it again. So I don't have to kind of sit there and stare at it, right? Because this is obviously nothing you're going to look at. Um, right now, again, I shrink this. That's a little bit exaggerated. As can see, since we had the gap up again, it kind of popped and just kind of went sideways. Didn't expect much movement in this one once the uh, U.S. market and U.S. traders come online. You typically will see a bit more in this one. Um, one thing I do want to point out again, I'm looking for, you know, shorts up in this area. I like that area as well, because again, the last time price was up here, it got flipped and kind of turned back down again. Um, you know, if you take this, this, this previous high versus the previous low, one of the tricks too, you can use, you can use a Fibonacci tool. Okay. I'm not using the Fibonacci sequence. I'm just using the tool so I can use percentages. And whenever you, you take the, the high and the low, you know, you can use the Fib in the top 30%, you're looking to go short. In the top or the bottom 30%, you're more biased to go long. Okay, and that's kind of what we're looking for right here. Um, we're up in the area where we're looking more to go short, looking for some type of a signal. And again, there has been a little bit of a signal, but again, it's only moved about 20 pips. So not the biggest movement in the Swiss. Looking at the dollar again, as you guys know, this is more or less a proxy for the stock market. Um, again, I am more of a trend trader. You can see right here, we're bouncing between two levels, but not a lot of trend, not a lot of trend. We had one big spike down and it retraced back up again and then it's gotten flat. Um, even over here on the four hour, you can see without the U.S. market open, didn't really expect too much movement. And again, this 30 minute is more like more like that is what we should be talking about. And again, it's bouncing between here is the low and here is the high. And again, it's kind of forming, you know, again, what I mentioned before, there's a channel to the top side. There's a channel. Whoops. There is a channel to the bottom side. Okay, so you guys can see we're just kind of bouncing in that sideways channel and it's about. That channel is about 50 pips, so it's not a bad run from top to bottom if you're able to grab it. Uh, don't forget on your daily Natus contracts for this pair, they are the strike differential is 20 pips. Okay, so you need, you know, you, you want to make sure that you're aware of what the differential is and what the channel sizes are. And in this case, again, it's about two, just over two strike prices top to bottom if you were looking at that one. All right, um, you know, obviously different ways you can play. And you can see this bottom, this bottom channel is based off of this little kind of pop right here. All right, so. With, with that being said, that is all the uh, the Natix pairs that we have on here. Um, as I said, I, I primarily focus this off of currencies because it's so early morning. Uh, but you can use the same techniques if you guys are going to set up your daily, your four hour, and your 30 minute. You can use that for stock indices. You can do it for oil as well. The oil I tend to like to go kind of four hour, 30 minute, five minute, especially on news days. All right. So, guys, that's all I have for Tuesday morning. Uh, we will be back on Monday morning next week. Uh, if anybody has any questions, you guys are more than welcome to email me. Uh, I do talk fast, which is okay. 
Um, if you're trying to get in touch with me, this is probably the easiest way. Go to the website. You can email me the old-fashioned. It's funny I say old-fashioned. You can email me at support at keeptradingsimple.com, and I can answer any questions or give you a clarification about what you mentioned today. Um, we do stream nightly on Twitch. Um, it's a platform that we use mostly for gamers, but I like to use it. It's very simple to use. Um, we actually put it on both. Um, you can you can catch us on Discord as well if you want to screenshot this. All right. So with that being said, guys, it is now 8 o'clock. Have a great trading day. Have a great trading week. And I will catch you guys on the next Tuesday. Or if you want, catch me on Monday morning for us to do the entire weekly setup. All right. Take care.